the best weapon in every single FromSoft game. And when I say every single FromSoft game, I mean like the same seven games that we always talk about because, you know, who cares about the rest? I mean, like it would be cool to talk about the other FromSoft games, but there's like 30 different ones and I've only played like a handful of them and I don't even like them that much outside of maybe a couple of Armored Core games, but even then I'm not really too knowledgeable in those games to like have it be on the list. So before you guys start commenting, oh, where's the best Ninja Blade weapon? Huh, what about the best Kingsfield 2 weapon? No, it's not happening. Now starting off with the best weapon in Demon Souls, we have the Meat Cleaver. I have no idea what they were thinking when they made this. There is no other weapon in all the other FromSoft games that has as many positives and many upsides going for it as this weapon does get. Let's just start off with the scalings. It gets an A scaling in Faith, and S scaling in Strength, and an S scaling in Dexterity. What? It doesn't even get a Dexterity requirement, but it gets an S scaling in Dexterity. And on top of that, this weapon can be buffed to further improve the damage. It also doesn't even need to be upgraded. When you get it, it's already maxed out. The weapon also gets health regen on every single hit. And being that it is a large hammer, it actually does get some sweet spot damage. So you can pair it alongside the Master's Ring to further improve the damage. And the large hammer moveset is actually really solid. It does get a very quick initial light attack, which also does result in a nice three hit combo. The heavy attack is a downward slam that knocks enemies to the ground and can like infinitely stun lock them. The rolling attack doesn't have much range, but it's so incredibly fast and it actually serves as an AoE, so it's really good for crowd control. Now in terms of the one-handed moveset, there's nothing too crazy. You do like the exact same swing over and over again, but it actually does consume a lot less stamina. So if you have like a lower endurance type of build, using it one-handed might end up being the play. And also like the other large hammers, you actually can block with it pretty well. It gets some very decent guard boost, very high physical damage reduction. So using it as a shield can actually be a very viable option. But even just trying to acquire the weapon is still incredibly easy. All you need is the adjudicator boss soul, which is very early on. And then you trade it in alongside a plus zero club. You don't even have to upgrade anything to just acquire the meat cleaver. Like this weapon virtually has no downsides. It's not that heavy. You get solid range, quick moveset, amazing damage. It's good in regular new game and it's probably the best weapon to have in almost every other new game iteration. And outside of weapons like the Northern Regalia and maybe the Dragon Bone Smasher, I don't think there's any other weapons that's close. Now, as for the best weapon in Dark Souls 1, I went with the Great Scythe. Now, this one actually was pretty close. There were a bunch of other weapons of which I did want to put at number one as well, but I actually do plan on making a top 10 best weapons list for every single one of these games. So I'll talk about them in a later video. So definitely subscribe for that. But as for the Great Scythe, I consider this one to be the best weapon because it has amazing range. It's very light. You get an amazing dexterity scaling. You have a very solid moveset as well with those quick downward slams with a light attack combo, really fast running attack. And the heavy attack is a nice horizontal swipe. So it's good for hitting multiple enemies at once. Does actually serve as a nice lunge as well. Now, the only downside about like polearm movesets in general is that every single time that you miss, you do this like stupid recovery animation and you get staggered for a little bit. But it's such a small little downside for the enormous upsides that the Great Scythe has. And obviously being that you can infuse it and buff it, it makes it incredibly versatile. But Halberds in general also get very solid stagger potential, which is extremely important in Dark Souls on because there's a lot of humanoid type of enemies and being able to stagger them quickly is going to be very nice. And the Great Scythe can just do that just as well as almost anything else. And also to mention, it actually does get slashing damage, which like half the bosses in this game are just like weaker to slash. And on top of that, it's a scythe, so it gets bleed, which against almost every single enemy is just going to be 30% damage, except for bosses, it will just be that 10% damage. But roughly half the bosses can be bled out, so you still benefit greatly by just having that bleed status effect. But even without it, it probably still end up being the best weapon. Because how does something that's this light have that much range, have that fast of a moveset, end up getting this much damage? How? Dark Souls 2's best weapon is going to go to the Ice Rapier. Now, almost any other Rapier is going to perform just as well. The regular Rapier, the Espada Repera. And the reason why Rapiers are so good is because they're so incredibly fast, consume very low stamina, they get really good counter damage, and they can just output the highest DPS in the entire game compared to any other weapon. Now, our smaller weapons in general can just probably perform this feat a lot better because like larger weapons in Dark Souls 2 serve very little purpose in my opinion, because typically larger weapons will have very long animations, especially like the recovery animations, and going up against like any faster enemy, especially in the DLC, it's going to result in a very tough time. They also require just more stat investments, more types of equipment load. They also consume a lot more stamina and the only benefits they really have is probably for like crowd control and hitting multiple enemies at once because they tend to be larger weapons and they can stagger a little bit better. But the thing is in this game, if you just two hand any weapon or any smaller weapon and throw in the stone ring, it could be just as good as any larger weapon. And with the rapier specifically, if you just throw on the stone ring, it gets just as much poise damage as a greatsword. And with how fast you can attack with the rapier, 
you're probably going to stagger more consistently. But getting into the Ice Rapier specifically, and as to why I prefer it more so than the other Rapiers, because one, it actually does get the higher base damage, and base damage in this game is much more important than having good scalings, because scalings in this game are just kind of shit that don't really matter much. And almost every single build is going to benefit if you're going into an elemental scaling, which Lightning is going to the best in almost every single instance, for the best damage type in the entire game right next to Strife, because there's a lot of enemies that are weak to it, and there's like hardly anything that's resist to it at all. So going into like a Lightning Infusion with Sunlight Blade results in such ridiculous DPS. But another really good thing about the Rapier is going to be its heavy attack. It actually does serve as a very nice projectile that actually does go relatively far and actually go through enemies. Now unfortunately the damage is not going to really be scaled for when you actually use all these buffs and these elemental damage. So using it as a form of DPS is never going to be an option. But having it as a nice projectile attack that can like kite enemies in, try and fight them one at a time, or just trying to hit multiple enemies at once, it actually does have some very solid utility there. But unfortunately it does consume a lot of durability. So you are going to have to stack up on a bunch of repair powders if you do plan on spamming this heavy attack. But yeah, the gameplay is just speaking for itself. It's so incredibly easy to use. It's with a bunch of poking attacks low stamina cost, low recovery animations, and just ridiculous damage. The best weapon in Bloodborne. Okay, this one was definitely the hardest to pick from because even though there's only like 8 weapons in the game, they're all like really good. But it definitely came down to two, the Whirligig Saw and Ludwig's Holy Blade. Now Ludwig's Holy Blade is definitely going to be the easiest one to use, which ease of use has been like a very common theme throughout all of my other picks. But the reason as to why it's so easy is because it has the best moveset. Amazing range, really fast, yet good variety, nice vertical swipes, horizontal swipes, really quick charge heavies. It's amazing both transformed and untransformed. But I'm still gonna go with the Whirligig Sword because this bad boy does stupid damage. And even then, it's not like it's that much harder to use. It doesn't actually have as good as a moveset, it does lack some vertical swipes, and its charged heavies do take a while to charge up. But the light attack combos are still very quick, the untransformed version is still relatively quick. You get some decent range, but like the damage potential and the cheese potential is just through the roof. The L2 attack when transformed is so damn good, it just stun locks all smaller types of enemies. Well, like any enemy that can get staggered and that's smaller, it's just going to be like an infinite stun lock almost every single time. And it doesn't like do mid damage, it doesn't consume any bullets, it just fucks shit up. Even against larger bosses, it just shreds. The only downside that you could say about it is that throughout the entire animation you are taking counter damage but honestly you take counter damage just by fucking breathing in this game so it doesn't really make much of a difference but getting into the stats of the weapon it actually gets surprisingly low requirements and it gets an s scaling in strength and that d scaling that it gets in skill is not even that bad you actually still get some decent amount of ar out of it if you spec into that stat which obviously is going to be very beneficial because visceral attack scale off skill which is a stupid concept, I don't like that. Now in terms of acquiring the weapon, you do have to go to the DLC, but thankfully the DLC is actually very accessible early on, and to get the Whirligig Saw, you don't have to kill anything. Just pick this bad boy up, go all into strength, pick yourself up some nice physical gems, and then spam every single button and I guarantee you will succeed. Now for Dark Souls 3, we have the Cell Sword Twin Blade. Surprise, surprise. But yeah, much like Dark Souls 2, quick weapons are just going to be like much easier to use because they have much faster animations, you consume less stamina, requires less stat investment. But the only trade-off being is that you're doing less poise damage, which in Dark Souls 3, like almost every single enemy gets like zero poise or can get staggered incredibly quickly. So using just regular curve swords like the Cell Sword Twin Blades, is going to be perfectly fine, which the Cell Sword Twin Blades in particular, you can two-hand them to do a cool power stance combo, of which both of those swords hit at the exact same time, and being that you're hitting multiple times in quick succession, pairing it alongside the multi-hit rings, could just result in more damage or more health regen, depending on which one you're going into. You could also just buff this with either poison or bleed to just proc status effects really quickly as well. But just going sharp infused and all into damage and pairing it alongside some gold pine resin or lightning blade, it just results in such stupid amounts of damage with such little downside. Look at how fast the animation is for every single one of these swings and you can just infinitely combo it over and over again. And it doesn't just end there as well because the weapon art, Spin Slash, is also incredibly useful. It doesn't consume much FP, it stun locks smaller enemies, you can combo into it from your light attacks. But not only is this weapon incredibly easy to use and powerful, it also is extremely light, has very low requirements, and you get it right at the beginning of the game. You can literally start off with this weapon if you pick the mercenary class. The best weapon in Sekiro. Look, I had to just make the joke because I know the entire comment section was going to be like, oh, what about the best weapon in Sekiro? <laughs> get it? Because it's only one weapon? <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make the joke first. But then I thought, we're above all that. Like, we're much better than this. We can talk about something more useful. I've been blessed with way too much Souls knowledge to just make the same stupid jokes over and over again. So what we're going to do instead is talk about the Ka Sabi Maru, the best katana in Sekiro. Look how badass this weapon is. It is so damn flashy and cool. You can deflect with it. You can block so much damage with this bad boy. You can feint your attacks. You can charge heavy as well. You can infuse this thing with so many different types of skills. This is definitely the best weapon in Sekiro, hands down.
Now for Armored Core 6, the best weapon is always hard to try and pick because you can equip four different weapons and it's not really as much as like which one's the best as like what's the best weapon composition. But for the sake of the video, we're obviously going to pick one. But nowadays, Armored Core tends to be a lot more PvP centric. And if you did want to know my PvP opinions, I did just make like a top 10 weapons list for PvP like a few weeks back. But being that this video is just going to be PvE, I'm going to go with the Stun and Needle Launcher, the VE60 SNA. Now, yes, this thing actually has got a nerf like a few months back. It did actually bring nerfs to its impact and its direct hit adjustment, which it actually was a somewhat of a considerable difference. But I don't think it really changes much as to how it builds around weapons because this thing is still just amazing. It still fires very quickly. It gets amazing range. Upon impact, still does a nice AoE. It still gets some of the highest direct hit adjustment compared to most other back weapons. It still does that same base damage. It still gets that same shock damage as well. The only thing that's really different is that I wouldn't really have two of them equipped at the same time anymore because the impact damage is a lot less. So I just pair this alongside a grenade cannon, which the earshot is definitely going to be the best one to have because that one just does like ridiculous amounts of impact. But yes, in my opinion, the stun needle launcher is still the best one. Now getting into the last game, what is the best weapon for Elden Ring? And it's always going to be between the Blasphemous Blade and the Dark Moon Greatsword. I don't think there's anything really close, maybe except for Mog when Sacred Spear. Now I did actually make an entire video dedicated to this one topic. I prefer the Dark Moon Greatsword because it just does like way more damage and it doesn't even like consume like any FP to do it as well. And I feel like it can just like shred bosses so much more quickly, but I'm probably still going to go with the Blasphemous Blade due to the fact that it just has better ease of use and just much better crowd control. You can just hit much more enemies at once with it. Is this going to be the better option going from between boss to boss and going through dungeons because of that health regen? The weapon skill like knocks enemies backwards. It can go through enemies. It goes incredibly far. But the weapon itself is just going to be a regular greatsword. So it gets a pretty solid moveset. Good variety. It's not too slow. Quick recovery animations. The weapon also gets a very good strength and faith scaling, which results in very high AR. And getting a kill with the weapon just equipped is just going to result in just more health regen anyway. You don't even need to actually kill the weapon itself to benefit off that. So obviously it gets really good synergy alongside faith builds. It works really well with the mimic tier ashes and it can just result in the most like noob friendly, easiest to use, most overpowered build, or at least one of the most overpowered builds in Elden Ring. Anyway, that is that. We are now done. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to go over the top 10 best weapons for every single one of these games. So definitely do subscribe for that. And just let me know down in the comments below what you consider to be the best weapon in every single game as well. And do follow me on Twitch because I actually am live there every single day doing some random challenge runs. Anyway, catch you guys around. Bye.